suffer from chronic CFED or can't focus energy drain? Try over-the-counter Vibrant. One tablet contains the same caffeine as a cup of coffee, but without the calories or coffee breath. Vibrant. Caffeine, not coffee. Taking Vibrant may result in increased productivity and decreased dread in setting alarms. Unexpected enjoyment of the graveyard shift has been associated with Vibrant. Vibrant may be a better budget option than drinking coffee. It may also decrease the urge to doze off, skip work, or exhibit signs of slacking. All jokes aside, always read the label, take only as directed, and limit caffeine as it may cause real side effects. Not for children under age 12. Blog Talk Radio. Mm. Guess what, Coop? You forgot the music. <laughs> oh, this show is, is just going off without a hitch tonight. Uh, let's we see. just spent 15 minutes uploading music, so then we forgot the music. <laughs> All right, you ready? Three, two, one. Two, one. And hit it, Neil. Take over, Coop. You're ha- you're leading the show, bro. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, with a slight delay, here we are. Metal Faithful. This is everybody's favorite heavy metal podcast on the internet. That is a uh, at least weekly and can't play full songs and doesn't have band interviews. We exist. This is the Metal Hammer of Doom. I am your host, the second chair, first chair is watching a Trolls movie, the uh, Metal Coop, Robert Cooper. How do I do? Pretty good. And I have a co-host. You heard him. Uh, host of Source Material here on the Rattlers Broadcasting Network, here on blogtalkradio.com, Mr. Jesse Starcher. What's up? Oh, well, it's it's been about an interesting 15 minutes, and let's just hope and pray that the next – hour or so are very uneventful <laughs> well let's hope it is eventful conversation wise in terms of technical yes. difficulties i would i would prefer that you know it cooperates just maybe oh you and me both man yeah <laughs> well let, let's just say right now okay on the right hand side i can see all the songs that we are about to partake of tonight that's a good thing uh however song one and song two are at two minutes and 15 seconds that my friend is incorrect luckily though i can immediately remedy that by going down here and re-uploading the song again and our first song clocking in at nine minutes and 52 seconds that feels a more like that feels a lot more like neobliviscaris yeah, see, there we go. It's a, uh, it's another one of those crazy, wacky, progressive bands that I uh, implored us to review. Uh, yeah, that's going to be actually this week's review, Metal Faithful. Since uh, instead of actually telling you what we're going to review, I'm just going to keep talking about it and let you get. <laughs> yeah, you get to figure out who it is. Who could this be? Guess that band. <laughs> Right. Yeah, we're actually, uh, this week we're reviewing Australian progressive extreme metal. I guess I can call them death metal. They're more of a, 
Yeah, uh, progressive death metal band, uh, Neo Bivascaris, with their most recent album, their first one since, I want to say, 2014. Uh, this album is titled, I'm trying to find the title, because, oh boy, uh, you'd figure, I think it's Earn, right? It's Earn. It's Earn. Yes, sir. We, yeah. we just made a joke about that. <laughs> That's right. We have Earn Part 1 and Earn Part 2, but we do not have Earn Part 3, 3 for Dale. Uh, earn heart. <laughs> That's what it would have been titled. <laughs> we we bring the uh, highbrow here. Oh yeah, you know, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm still bummed I didn't get to see them live. Them and Allegiant. Oh. A buddy of mine was like, "Yeah, man, I got in for free." I was like, "What the fuck?" He's like, "Oh, damn, fucking awesome." I'm like, "I'm like, I want to hit you with a brick right now." Give <laughs> the old brick bath. Yeah, they are. Uh, I mean, they're uh, absolutely wonderful. I'm actually really sad Mark didn't get to do this uh, review with us because uh, while I don't know if this is his cup of tea, I really think it would be eye-opening. Agreed. Agreed. I, I, I think uh, there'd be a certain point he would be like, uh, mm, mm, uh. <laughs> <laughs> possibly. Yeah, there he he would. Uh, I, I don't know if there would be a lot of commentary. However, I know I know Mark does give things a good listen, so you never know with him. But it's unfortunate that he's not here tonight to to kind of let us know what he would think. He's got like he's got Star Wars on the brain or something. I mean, I do too. I was talking to a friend, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go see. It. He goes, Did you get your tickets? So I looked at one of our uh, the theaters, like that's you know, like 20 minutes away. They have showings from seven to midnight. They have a showing every 30 minutes. Oh, wow. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, you're oh, not yeah. going to run we'll into any okay. problems. <laughs> no. I'm not worried about that at all. <laughs> Which, you know, I really wasn't all that – I mean, I wasn't all that worried about it to begin with. I was pretty sure we were going to – that was going to be all right, even though I'm a little, a little disappointed this time because uh, all my friends are either moved or working that night. So, no uh, – Ah, bummer. No Star uh, – well, yeah, well, last time it was like we all got together, fucking sat in the theater by ourselves for an hour before anybody else showed up. <laughs> That's a fun time. And that, yeah, to see The Force Awakens, it was uh, for Rogue One. I just went with my stepdad like usual, which was uh, which was cool. That poor man. I dragged him to three movies on the on the weekend of my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> we went and saw. Uh, yeah, we saw Friday night. We saw Marshall, which was the uh, Chadwick Boseman film. That's. Uh, that's the uh, was it, the historical drama on uh, Thurgood Marshall. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was really good. Uh, and then we saw Lady Bird, which was a uh, kind of coming of age film that focuses on a uh, you know kind of one of your more rebellious sort of teenagers and her trying to just deal with life and her mother who loves her very much but is kind of overbearing. I'm like, I okay. feel you, man. I feel you. <laughs> and then, uh, then we saw Coco, and then and then we uh, finished it off with Coco. Three because films in how many days? People. Two. In two days. Oh, that's packing it, it in, was, buddy. Because that's it, that's yeah. it takes a it takes a bit it there was, to try and get to the theater and turn good. around and spend spend that much time there. Well, the thing is, is the uh, Marshall was playing at like our local 250 theater, so that's 10 minutes from the house. Well, 15, depending on how I'm speeding. Uh, you say 250. So, I mean, what does that, that mean? Two dollars and fifty cents, or? Yep, a ticket. Okay. Nice. That's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. No, not bad at all. So it was. Uh, so I managed to. We went there at the seven o'clock. You know, came home, did whatever, and then for Lady Bird, we actually had to go to the AMC theater, which sucked because that was expensive. It was like nine dollars. Yeah. It was like eight dollars a ticket for the matinee. <laughs> We're doing the movie pass thing pretty soon, I think. I don't know if you've yeah. seen much of that or not, but that that is probably going to be happening here. I, I was looking it up just to kind of see what what the costs were and stuff. So you're looking at like you can buy a three, six, or twelve month um, card, and mm-hmm. it looks interesting. I'm going to probably do the three months just to see. You know, you got to go to some movies now. My mom goes to movies every weekend, and at some point I you're probably going to run. It. Do you really? That's yeah, man. That, that's used to that used to be something that I did, you know. Well, I'd say before I got married. Shortly after I got married, you know, we 
we kind of, and then of course kids come along. You don't, you're not taking the kids and you got to find a babysitter and all that junk. So it's usually kind of like, Oh, I don't want to go to all the work to try and get out of this house. Just keep me in my prison, please. Um, and, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's, we used to do that. You know, me and the wife used to do that all the time when we were dating, we'd, we'd hit as many movies as we could. Now with movie pass, dude, that, that makes it cheap, cheap to do it that way. I mean, hmm. I mean, thirty bucks yeah, we for have three a, months. That's nice. That's not bad at all. Our uh, actually, we have an art house theater in downtown, which I'd go to more if I could parallel park. <laughs> I can't parallel park. <laughs> it's like a barrier. I mean, I, I don't. Yeah, the one barrier I mean, I that keeps you from going there. <laughs> I just can't parallel park, I, man. I can't go. Can't do I, it. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's parking garages around there, but I went there once and I got lost. And I had some friends in a parking there. garage. Yeah, and we, well, I got lost getting to there because it's a bunch of you know downtowns. So it's one way streets and everything. Oh yeah. yeah. The only way we ended up passing the strip club that was beside it. I'm like, oh, there it is, girls, girls, girls. <laughs> <laughs> girls, but, yeah, girls, I mean, girls. Girls. Which they have a, uh, but yeah, that theater, the Aperture, has a thirty-five dollar uh, year pass. Oh, a year. Yeah. That ain't bad at all, dude. Of course, I mean, what do they yeah. show? Is it just like one one little, just like a little one theater, or is it actually somewhat decent? Or they got, there it's all right. They have, I mean, it's a smaller theater, but it's they have like four, they have four uh, theaters. Okay. And it's like art house stuff, so like your foreign stuff, independent films. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot that they play that I'd love to see, but the other theater I go to, which is in Lexington, it's kind of shoddy, like. There's one of the uh, one of the theaters was closed, and I was like, "Huh, the projector break? No, the uh, ceiling was deemed uh, <laughs> uninhabitable. <laughs> like ceiling caved in. Well, that's yeah, not yeah good. it was it was not it was not deemed structurally uh, fit. Yeah, so it's not great, but I mean, tickets are six dollars. Uh, yeah, six dollars a piece, mm-hmm. and then you can get we get we get two large drinks and a large popcorn. Everything's refillable, sixteen bucks. So yeah, like thirty hmm. bucks total, which is like two tickets and a popcorn at the other theater. So not bad. Not bad. So yeah, not we, bad at all. Yeah, actually, my my favorite one that we ever did was we did American Made, and we double featured it with Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Ooh, that was that was five hours. Dang. That's, yeah, that's a damn yeah. theater. Yeah, well, I mean, I was fine with that. Like, I love that shit. But the thing that killed me were these kids that were in there, and they were loud. And like, it's fucking Blade Runner, so it's not one of those films that's it's not really loud in some no, ways. No, it's a more it's thriller kind of deal. Yeah, it's it's a little more quiet in scenes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, damn it, I want to kill these children. But yeah, it was, well, you're getting old, kid. It was a good time. Oh, I know, I know. But yeah, this week's going to be good. I think The Shape of Water is being released uh, nationwide, the Guillermo del Toro film. Abe Sabian. Uh, God, he's being re- yeah, God, he's being released. I'm excited okay. for that. And then, of course, uh, a little film called Star Wars. So. Oh, that, that, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah it, it, it's and, under and the radar. Of, <laughs> and speaking of little album, little things, Nable of the Scars. Uh, so... I'm assuming you had no indication of who these people were before I uh, thrust correct. them upon you. You are correct, sir. No idea. Mm. Do you, uh, th- does it at least give you any inclination to listen to their past discography? Uh, I should have. Did I know? But uh, I listened to this album about three times, three or four times, going into the going into our I... review tonight. And you know it's it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting band. We'll just put it that way. I'm, I'll let you talk about them a little bit more here. But it's it was a, something that I've I don't I haven't listened to a lot of this. I, I don't know if we call it a genre or not. You you can uh, definitely give us some more details as to what these guys sound like and what what's involved here. But yeah, you know. I heard about them touring with a Legion and I was like, yeah, well, this ought to be interesting. I, 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 I can't wait to hear what these guys sound like. Cause if they were coming close to 
my neck of the woods, which I don't believe they were. Well, they might have hit Cleveland. There was they might have hit Cleveland, but I I, I can't remember. It was, it was you know kind of out of reach for me. I couldn't make it to one of the concerts. Uh, I know the Sabaton Creator one. That's the one that made me mad because nobody's they're not coming anywhere near here. They're coming with like, like closest is like four or five hours away. So anyway, Ugh. yeah. So I was I was curious as to how because I'm a huge fan of Ale- of Allegiant. So if they sounded anything like them, uh, I w- I was going to be I was I was stoked to give it a shot. Uh, and they don't spoiler alert. They definitely don't sound like Allegiant. They're not your uh, technical death metal, uh, futuristic sci-fi stuff. Robots are taking over the world. We're kind of far from that here, but uh, I'll go ahead and let you continue, Coop. Oh yeah, you're fine. Uh, I never listened to much of Legion, which I need to. They're one of those kind of like never, just never got to them. Uh, but for me, actually, funny thing, uh, I didn't give them a listen until last year because uh, when I was writing the metal, the Hammer of Doom news report on 411mania.com. I need to get back to writing. I say that like weekly to myself. <laughs> well, part of it okay. is I need to get my laptop repaired because, like I said, I stepped on it. So that's a busted Big screen. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah it, it's a size 13, so it, it, it's a pretty big <laughs> coop boot. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, I remember when I did my top uh, 50 of 2012, which was – Again, I think when I did the last one in 2013, I killed. I just killed it for me for myself because uh, 50 reviews in three weeks. Ugh. It, it was a good 30, 000, 20, 30 thousand words. Wow. <laughs> and it wasn't. It, yeah, it was. I think it was maybe probably about 20. Yeah, it was. But it's crazy. It took me fucking hours upon hours because, you know, I was creating. Like even if it was like multi, like I was creating reviews for 50 separate albums and when I started getting to the ones at the end I was just gushing because you know I'm fucking excited about that shit so uh <laughs> yeah the one in 2012 uh I remembered that one of the commenters was like dude you have to check out this album Portal Vibe by this band Neo Blipscaris and I'm like okay uh I'll get to that someday well one day <laughs> one day last year <laughs> I was uh I, w- I was in Lawn and Garden in the fucking middle of winter and I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this band a try. And I listened to their uh, the song Forget Not, which is actually a technical self-titled song, because that is what Neo Bluviscaris means in Latin. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that nice. song is six minutes. It's instrumental. The first six minutes of it is pure instrumental and is really engaging. And then the, lo- then the vocals start in. And I find the vocals for this band to be... I'm not going to say wholly unique because they're not, but with everything else that's being offered, I truly feel like they are a uh, one of the richer bands in terms of overall qual- overall offering in terms of quality. Yeah, you got a mix like, you of know. you got a mix of like harsh and clean uh, vocals throughout most of the songs. Uh, so it's you say it's not unique, but I mean. Yeah, I I gravitate towards stuff like that. They're, I think they have an, a niche in uh, in in the metal world. Uh, so I imagine people are pretty much similar to what I am, or similar have similar that have similar taste that I do would probably enjoy that. Uh, that's it's just something that I I I like. Yeah, well they scream and they growl, which is what impresses me even more. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they get both. And they have the singing, which is done by the violinist, which they have a violinist. And that's right. Yeah. That oh, whew, that uh, yeah, that's pretty fucking wonderful right there. Uh, the the band I would almost compare them to, for me in terms of like a mainstream metal appeal, would be kind of your older Opeth. Okay. Uh, but I, I find them more engaging. I feel. Uh, I love Opeth. Opeth is one of my favorite bands for a long time. Uh, I've kind of cooled on them a little just because I'm kind of finding – I just kind of find it sometimes hard to really get into some of their longer songs. Their newer materials just – I feel like it's disappointing for what they can offer. Like I understand what Mike Ackerfeld's doing. Like the man wants to be back in the 70s as a prog rock uh, god. But <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I get it. I Just a little late. That's why he left. <laughs> that's why he left uh, Bloodbath because he wasn't feeling death metal anymore, and I can wholly, I can wholly appreciate that. But uh, yeah, Neo Bloodiscaris, like their music, almost has a classical quality to it, uh, which is interesting because uh, their music is actually being has been studied by a, a classical music institute. Uh, just as how deep and technical it is. I mean, it's it's layered. It's like a it's yes. like an onion or an ogre. It has layers. An ogre. Yeah. I won't. From, remember, <laughs> I don't get the reference. Remember from Shrek. <laughs> from Shrek. Oh, okay. I get it. I get you it. Now. He, yes. He, he was like ogres are like onions. And donkeys are like they stink. He's like no, they have layers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! Uh, geez, who's the one with kids here? No, I'm not kidding. I know, came dude, out when well, I was man, a kid, so I could I could probably recite some stuff from. Let's see, what's been on the TV here lately? Uh, a lot of Boss Baby. Give me a break, dude. Yeah, oh, Boss geez, Baby. It's not the Trump Baby. I know it's, it's Trump Baby. It is. I, I find another spot in a room somewhere else, far, far away. <laughs> That's how it was to a certain point with like my my dad's side of the family when I was like your rebellious teenager. Like they would watch Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings every weekend, and I got so burned out on those films. Yeah, I'd just be like, I'm going to watch wrestling. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, World Tag League. Uh, you're oh, it. Oh God. For some oh, reason, oh, every time oh. I think uh, I hear World Tag League, I think of people running around trying to tag each other. That is not the case, although there's probably a match or something like that. But uh, uh, I am surprised <laughs> that you knew about the World Tag League, sir. Hey, you've plugged it a couple times, if I remember correctly. At least you were going to watch it. it uh, yeah, and oh then, of God, course, I've I, got my – it shows up in my Facebook feed every once in a while. Which, hey, uh, January 4th, New Japan has their uh, has their WrestleMania. And then uh, oh, a few days – yeah, on the 4th, which is a Thursday. But on the 6th, if you get Access TV, uh, they're showing, like, the top three matches of Wrestle Kingdom 12 on uh, on on their uh, channel. Now, a uh, quick question. We'll get back to talking about the album because I want to know. Uh, you <laughs> think I could yeah. look this up. But, okay, Jericho and Kenny uh-huh. Omega, is that happening at this WrestleMania thing you're talking about? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. Man, the build-up. Dude, I have not watched a, a, a bit of the – well, excuse me, I have. I watched where Jericho came on whatever the, the screen and gave yeah. Omega a hard time. But I would never have known about that had it not just completely blown up all over Facebook. And I'm like, this this is actually – this is very intriguing in my opinion. But uh, so oh, that, he okay. showed up at the World Tag League Finals and beat the shit out of Kenny Omega and left him a bloody uh, mess. Oh damn! It's good. It's a good build up. And for some reason, I mean, I'm all excited yeah, about and, it. Uh, I don't even watch. You know, I don't watch wrestling, and quite, I haven't watched it in a well, long time. Well, there you go. I mean, if, if you want to, I mean, it's going to be a five-hour show, but it is going to be worth it. All right. I get so. Oh, I am so excited. Almost as excited <laughs> as I am for uh, Neil Bloodiscaris. Uh, <laughs> bringing it back. Yeah, this this thing. Yeah, just bring it, just reeling it back in. Because uh, yeah, this, this album uh, when it, when I found out it was coming out, I was like, Mark, okay, I only have two albums that like we have to review. And I, I think I was one. I'm so far, I'm one for one. Uh, and this album really, uh, I'm really excited for it. Which is funny. Uh, as a just another aside, I'm excited for our year end show because I've got yeah. a lot of shit that I'm like, oh yeah, like I bought some. Uh, a few, actually, a few albums off eBay. One by a band called Paul Bear, no relation to the manager. Paul Bear, or the Undertaker. Undertaker. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, yeah. Paul Paul Bear. They're kind of a doom metal outfit, and uh, Paradise Lost, who are now back to being death metal, because they used they were doing like a goth metal thing, and it wasn't my thing. It wasn't my jam. And uh, I mean, Dead Lord, which is a really good rock band. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, we're gonna have a ton of good shit to play on there. Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're gonna we'll need to bring it because like I'm having a hard time finding stuff that I have listened to, aside from what we've covered on the on the show. 
So I'm mm. going to be digging. I'll be I'll be digging. I think there's a couple like uh, Fireball Ministry. I might bring something like that. And there's another. There's a couple other ones I've listened to. Other albums that we never talked about on here. But I I, I it's going to be a challenge for me. So yeah, it'll be fun. Well, you can always do what I've done in the past. If I felt like I'm missing something, go read some year end lists. There, yeah, well, I just pulled up Spotify just to see here what I, what have I missed here? Oh yeah, so, I mean, there's gonna be like Power Trip. When I saw Power Trip, they're awesome. There, you, I think you enjoy them. They're kind of your crossover thrash sort of thing in your face and fucking thrashy. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, I think we should probably start uh, playing songs because it's like what ten o'clock. Is that what we're here for? Nine thirty, nine forty, sir. It, it, it's it's only been twenty minutes. 20, twenty minutes of prologue uh, that has nothing to do with, with the little little to do with the album. I think maybe we can play some music. I guess. <laughs> no, well, yeah. I mean, we can get the ball rolling and get the tangents going as we go. Oh, so, uh, here yeah, we go. All right. Yeah. All right. So our uh, first song. What, what is it called? It is called uh, Libera Part One, Saturnine Spheres.
All right, that was uh, yeah, it was kind of hard to figure out where to where to cut those songs off. Uh, what'd you think? <laughs> well, it was it was fast paced. It felt like metal. Uh, oh, that's yeah, cool. that's good. Yes, this is the Metal Hammer of Doom. Uh, just ask Mark Rattle. It's not the country knows. washboard of jubilation. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. And and immediately, just like I said, we got the we got the pairing of the uh, the clean, or as Wikipedia apparently is calling it, and unclean vocals here. Uh, which I got to watch a I I had the opportunity and the distinction to watch a fifty minute video, pretty much uninterrupted, on these guys talking to. Uh, I believe they're still in Australia. This is before they hit their U.S. tour. Uh, and they were talking about this album. So I have a little bit of insight uh, from that video where they they basically had uh, an interview with a lady who asked some pretty good questions. Uh, and specifically, this first song, I got to learn what it was about. And it is about uh, extinction and man's, I guess... N- <laughs> As as well meaning as we are, we just continue to march to extinction of other species and our own. Uh, so if you look at the lyrics, a lot of what we see in there, uh, you you can pretty much get that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll read one part of it here to you: life's demise, mechanized in design. Far beyond our humanity are in design to be erased from all time. Through the shadow of the valley of the de- of death, the same blood. So, I mean, you can kind of get that. You get that dark feeling, and there, there's a. This album's called Urn. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, there's a lot of uh, of death that has to be involved with a, a good bit of these songs. Um, Coop, I mean, uh, we, did we get to hear the violin? Did the violin kick in there? Oh, the, yeah, the violin was throughout it. Okay, I was going to say, I was listening to it, but I didn't know if, uh, I couldn't remember if they played it in there. I, it, there who, well, hold on, hold on. Let me, before I get ahead of myself, looking for the violinist name. These two guys have been with the band the whole time, and that's Tim Charles, who's the violinist and the clean vocalist, I believe. Uh, and Zen Zenor, which the lady was just calling him Zen, and I think Tim was calling him Zen. So Zen is the the unclean vocals. Uh, so those two guys were the guys that were being interviewed as well. And uh, it was interesting because he was talking about how one of these songs when we I, I don't know if it was this one or uh, if, if it's one of the later ones, but when he they mixed the song, he mixed it to where his he was singing. And then he did the violins as well. So immediately when he told the guys, hey, this is what I did, you know, this is kind of the song structure, they're like, how the hell are you going to do that on tour? How are you going to sing and play violin at the same time? Well, he said it's not impossible, but it's very tough to do because you've got to use your chin to, like, hold the violin <laughs> and try to sing at the same time. Uh, so... I'm sure they got some way around it, but I know that they, he said they had not – at that time when they were talking about the album, they had not even attempted to do that song live yet. So I'm curious as to whether they're trying to do it out across the states because they mentioned it like one or two things have happened. You've either seen it across the U.S. and, I've, and I tried it and I've, I did great or I have failed miserably. Uh, so interesting stuff though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, my buddy went and saw them. Told me they played like eight, eight or nine songs. Like I think it was eight or nine songs over an hour and a half. Yeah, dude. I mean, <laughs> I imagine what we got here on this album. Like that song right there was nine minutes and fifty-two seconds. So I'm sure that's a representation of what you probably get when you get a Neo Blavascaris. I'm gonna pronounce it nine different ways tonight. I'm gonna call him Neo. How's that? I'll call him Neo. <laughs> uh, I imagine you get that when you get pick up this band's album you're probably going to get only a few tracks but some epic epic song play so yeah uh it's probably like i plan on buying this album around christmas i put it on my wish list so we'll see if i actually uh if i get it if i don't get it i'll buy it like uh nice yeah 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 yeah. 
it's uh, it's, one, it's probably going to be just like Thross and Blot for me. It's where it's going to just be on heavy ro- rotation. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, long songs, uh, on one hand, they're kind of uh, – in terms of car listening, they're a little bit of a turnoff. You know, a lot of times your uh, your car ride is not going to be fucking an hour long, yeah. depending on your yeah. commute. Mine's like – my commute to work is like 10 minutes mm-hmm. if I'm speeding, which I'm always speeding, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like uh, I'm like Sammy Hagar. You can't, I can't drive, drive 55. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but with your karaoke this week, I did a 18 in Life by Skid Row, and I butchered part of it because I'm like, oh, I don't have that high of a vocal range. Fuck. Yeah, you learn <laughs> you learn what songs to do and what songs not to do. I believe I tried a Leonard Skinner song. Uh, oh, was it Give Me Three Steps? One of those. It was a Leonard Skinner song, and they, it absolutely was – the worst karaoke outing I've ever had. And I, I was like, I'm never, ever doing that song again. So, yes, there are songs you can do, and there are definitely songs you can't. Yeah, I've kind of learned some of your more aggressive uh, aggressive metal songs, where, like, if I'm doing, like, a Pantera, like, I don't have a necessarily have a really good, like, shouting vocal. Mm-hmm. My vocal is more of, like, a kind of a clean power metal sort of vibe to it. Like it's kind of clean and bright. That's good stuff. Like I don't, I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I make it work, especially when I do emo music from like the two thousands. <laughs> like Ohio, like Ohio is for lovers by uh, Hawthorne Heights. Oh boy! Oh yeah. M- middle school That's me bitter. was very pleased with that. Hey man, I had the fucking, uh, I had the bar singing with me. Did so, you really? I that w- wins. I, I that wins. Win. Uh, Oh yeah, I do. I can do that shit. Like like stuff I used to listen to then, like Fall Out Boy. Oh yeah, They'll, I I get that crowd in the palm of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, where are we? Oh yeah, this album. Uh, so I looked up Sat. Is it Saturnine? I think it's Saturnine. Is how you say it. Sure. And uh, yeah, well I I did use the old googly R. Ah, and, uh, there you it go. Means they, uh, it's a person or like a manner, the manner of a person, and it means slow and gloomy. So, I, the lead singer of this album, uh, I don't know if you've seen pictures of these guys, but him versus Tim Charles, the guy that did the violinist, that he, he, Tim looked like this bright, happy dude, and then. I mean, he's got the long black hair, the little little black patch beard, and the uh, the lady that was interviewed him kept ragging on him and calling him a goth. Uh, and it was all in fun, all in good fun, but uh, it was it was funny because you know he he looks the part of what I would assume one of the singers of this band should look like, you know, because <laughs> it's. It is gloomy. Some of the stuff that they sing about, even though it, it's there's it's fast paced, there is a lot of emotion to what you hear. And just like you said, there's layers upon layers upon layers uh, when you pick these pick the sound apart. So uh, it's it's very interesting. I, I'm you know I'm I get to track one here and I'm like, hey, all right, hold on, Colt. So. I'm ready for track two, unless you got something else you want to say here. No, no I'm good. Uh, let's go on to the instrumental. He- instrumental. 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 Here. Uh, yeah. Metaconia. Uh, <laughs> it is called Libera Part Two Ascent of Burning Moths.
one of the shorter ones of the album. It looks like uh, two minutes, two minutes long. Oh wow, that is. Uh... <laughs> but showcasing you know that bad. violin, showcasing that violin. As I was listening to that, I was like, "This reminds me of the La La Land soundtrack." Uh, can't say I, I I've heard that. Oh, I've seen that movie twice in theaters. <laughs> I fucking adored that movie. I'm not even, I've, heard, I've heard good things. I, I just not, I haven't had a chance to sit down and watch it yet. Oh, it is. I I found it wonderful. Uh, yeah, the first time I drug my uh, gaggles, uh, the gal pals, with me, and the second time I uh, took a girl on a date. And even though that was a bad idea, she sucked. <laughs> I mean, I suck too. I I learned a few things. I'm like, all right, let's not do this. But uh, yeah, she was uh, she's flaky. The one th- our second day, we uh, which is as far as I ever get, we were at a uh, Starbucks just talking, and there was a baby possum that ran by. It was tiny and adorable. That at the po- at, at okay possum at Mc, where at McDonald's? Oh, Starbucks. Starbucks, sorry, Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah, just ran by and I'm like, oh, you're so cute. North Carolina. Uh, yes. Possums <laughs> and raccoons. Possums and raccoons. But yeah, uh, this instrumental, I really, I really enjoyed this instrumental. Uh, uh, if I ever feel like I need to send somebody uh, maybe a taste of this band musically, I would send them this song. I mean, it's short. Uh, I mean, there's a few songs off their pat their uh, last album too. Uh, what was their last album? Uh, just, Citadel. Uh, it is. According, according to Spotify, Citadel. 2014 okay. Citadel. Yep. Yeah, it was Citadel. Okay, I was just making sure. It's a, it's a wonderful album. They've got some instrumentals on there too, but I like this. Uh, it's very violin heavy. Uh, there's a nice showcase of it, which I feel like it's a. Uh, it's a good way to hook people in to this band because uh, I know a lot of people, as soon as they hear growling vocals, they immediately like they get turned off me. faster than a fur. Yeah. They get turned off faster than a woman on when you say marriage on the first date. <laughs> oh, I get well. I should say a man when you say marriage on the first date. Let's be honest. Uh, let's 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 do. <laughs> Sometimes oh, we're too yeah, honest yeah. here on the Metal Hammer of Doom. <laughs> Oh, oh, I had a coworker that calls me. No, he still calls me No Filter. I was no about Filter di- Dickwad. Yeah, he's like Robert No Filter because he was because we were talking about some di- dick bag contractor who likes to brag about you know getting double shipments of oh. stuff from our our company and you know not. He's like, oh, I didn't send it back. I'm like, oh, fuck you, bulk cutted twat. He he brags to the people that work for the company that uh-huh. he. Got free shit off of that company. Fourteen thousand dollars worth of free shit. That dude's a shithead. The only reason he's doing that is because the only reason he's doing that is because he's trying to rub it in somebody's face. What a dick. Or he wants to sound yeah, he wants to sound cool. Like yeah, (laughs) like our store manager like like she loves him because he spends like all sorts of money there. She does, but he's a dickhead and uh yeah, so I was talking to one of my coworkers. He goes, "He's a different type of fella," and I'm like, "No, he's a." I said, "He's a fucking dick," and he's like, <laughs> "No filter." Because <laughs> I mean, I make jokes like that. Like I had some guy today talking about, "Yeah, you know, it was just six inches." I'm like, "Yeah, sometimes that's all you need." <laughs> ah, oh boy. Uh, all right, or I hit him with my favorite because it snowed here in North Carolina over the weekend. Would you that's believe what I it? Heard. Yeah. Oh, I was I was pissed because that was Ronnie like was the end of my vacation. Pictures. All my friends mm-hmm. were there, and I'm like, all right, we're gonna hang out, and then it snowed. Which you know, over here it doesn't snow; it just sleets fucking six inches. Yeah. Or even just two, which I mean, it wasn't awful, but it was just enough snow to piss me off. But uh, so I was talking to some guy, this guy up, but he's like, yeah, up in the mountains in Boone, they say we're gonna get seven to twelve, and I was like, well, sir. Uh, you know, usually when someone promises that, they're lying. <laughs> uh, boom! Still got it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've 
come to find that, uh, depending on your audience, women think that that joke's hilarious, mm-hmm. and some men are like, "Why are you talking about dicks?" <laughs> like you're talking about queer. Stop. North Carolina. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, it's that's uh that is how my work day goes. Like usually, I get a few good ones in on my co- my customers. It just depends on who they are. Like I've gotten into this habit of people like I got a question for you. I say I got an answer, and they say okay. And before they can speak, I say hot dogs. And I was like, why? I'm like, man, well, you're looking for an answer. That's what that's all I got. <laughs> oh, you'd because, be a, you, cause I, you'd be a joy to work with for about three days, and then all of a sudden oh, I'm like. Me? Get me a gun. <laughs> That's the funny part. My co- I was gone for 10 days, and when I came back, everybody's like, you can't be gone. You can't leave. They're like, it was boring. <laughs> it falls apart. It falls apart around here. So, we need know, our coo- well, they just said, it, it was just like, it's really boring. Like, nobody's there making jokes, because I'll just, you know, just typically got always got something to say. There they were. I, uh, I, was, I was flattered. Uh, what yeah, are you doing, I always, dude? I always have... My- Sorry, my my son my son has come down. My four year old son has come down here. He he has the electrical tape, and he is wrapping it around his toy gun. I I don't understand what you're trying to do. I'm actually I'm, I'm fixing. You're fi- it's not broke, son. Here we'll just take this right here. Hey. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Boom. All right. <laughs> Fatherhood. All right. So let's yeah. get to track three. Let's do that because I gotta get this boy up back into bed. So what's what's the name of this next track? Uh, t- track three is uh, actually the first song I heard off this album. This is titled Intravenous. <laughs>
intravenous. Intravenous. That's a that's a good. If that was was that a single? Is that why you heard it, or how did you come about hearing that? Well, it was there. Uh, I guess you could say they released it as the single. It was the. Uh, I'm actually, you know, on a side note, I'm wondering if they're going to release it, uh, maybe a shortened version as a official video. That's what they did with uh, uh, Curator. Curator? Curator. Uh, Curator. <laughs> Curator. <laughs> Curator. The, the next uh, Marvel villain. Curator. Oh, God. Well, don't, well you know, if they're going to put him in a movie, don't worry, you're not going to get much of him. <laughs> That's the truth. Just, Marvel formula. You don't gonna, know much about the villain. I mean, hey, DC did it. Did the same damn thing. So. Oh, oh boy. Well, okay. So, they was cur- curator off of the previous album. Yeah, they uh, released like a instead of it was like originally probably like eleven minutes. They cut it down to about five for a video. Okay, there is an official video. Let me look and see which one it is on YouTube right now. From this album, I just because uh, I did a I oh did yeah, a it was, was intravenous. You're right. Was it really? Yeah, it was intravenous. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, but yeah, I, I you said this is a you, you had heard this one. I, I'll tell you right now, my thoughts on it. This is this is probably the best song off this album and a, and a good one to release because it feels more uh, palpable for my taste. Because yeah, we keep they keep the metal up. There's not they're not losing a whole lot of elements here. We got metal, we got violin, we've got you know clean and unclean vocals. Uh, so it's it's a good one to represent what the good parts of this album for for sure. Yeah, uh, I mean it's also segmented in a way. Like uh, we almost got through all the lyrics in one go. Oh, is this so one of those ones where it, they? Yeah, they do all the lyrics, and then it's just it becomes like a mega instrumental piece towards the end, like a jam session. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I took the lyrics that we got to hear, and I threw them in the old word counter. Uh oh, that's right. You know what? The you know what we do criticize bands sometimes for being kind of ho hum when it comes to lyrical content, but. Neobliviscaris is not going to let you down, ladies and gentlemen. Readability level, college student. So, oh yeah, that's that's from this one. They they do write some songs. I mean, most of the verses. Uh, I mean, you got words like well, say words, uh, but I mean, you know, translucent. Now, these are great descriptors uh, that are peppered throughout the lyrics that that really add to a song. Uh, so, uh, they're not, you can tell already that their music is, it's smart just by listening to what they play. But then when you go in and look at the lyrics, it's not a let down there as well. Yeah. I, uh, there's no in this moment. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> you know what was funny? It's like, it's like, get this. I just remembered this. So we have a, I got a coworker. He's a dude, bro. He's like. You know, ripped. Like, yeah. Always like, yeah, bro. So, like, he gives me shit for the metal because he's like, God, how do you listen to that shit? So he was like, What you the know, fuck does he like, listen I to? Was, I don't know, but he, I think Rap. he was trying to like be nice Fucking and find rap. common ground with me. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh, Yeah, the closest thing I listen to metal, uh, the closest metal, he's like Five Finger Death Punch. And hmm. you can guess what my next words were. I fucking hate that band. <laughs> <laughs> and like water was dribbling down his chin as I said that. Because <laughs> I, I was like, I think I broke it. I think yeah, I heard his, his eyes are switching. <laughs> he, he was just, he's like, what, they're douchey. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, dude. They're, I was like, they're a bunch of fucking tool bags. He's like, what the hell? He's like, but they do so much for the military. I'm like, okay. Ivan Moody stole a tool. <laughs> and then, uh, I mean, I told him I understand the appeal. I mean, I get it. It's just, it's not for me. Like, I, it does nothing for me. And I was like, let me guess. He also liked Disturbed. He's like, I love Disturbed. I'm like, uh-huh. 
<laughs> I listen. I listen like, what about to some it? disturbed today. I did listen to the sickness, so I I I, 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 I do identify I enjoy that there. Song. It's so funny because I, mean, I like I like some disturbed. The girl that I a girl that I work with, I, I just messaged her and I, I can't remember what I asked. I asked her what she she had her earbuds in. I said, "What are you listening to?" And she was listening to Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> I said, "Hey," I said, "They do a cover." You know, I got to spread the word. They do a cover of Mama Said Knock You Out. And, uh, oh, I've got to find that immediately. So it's so funny. And I was listening to Disturbed today. So the two bands that you just mentioned in, in your work passing happened in my work passing today. And then I was like, Avenged Sevenfold. He's like, oh, I don't really like them. I'm like, okay. Like, oh, uh, like shit, I see dude. Them as I, in- pulled into the, I pulled into the parking lot today. Dude was playing Avenged Sevenfold. Guy works in the total opposite part of the building. Go ahead and name another band. I guarantee it came it, somehow. It, it it involved my day today. Uh, well, I, I don't I don't quite know about that. Like I was listening to uh, what was I listening to on my way into work? It was oof. I have to look at. I have to look it up. Yeah, I was listening because I always love listening to something random and heavy as I walk into the doors, just because I like I want to wake myself up and be obnoxious at the same time. I mean, yeah, <laughs> who doesn't really? Coop's uh, here. Like a, uh, like I was the metal? Listening, Oh yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that is uh, that is the usual response I get. It's like, huh? Coop's here. <laughs> like I was listening to Annihilator the other morning. That was fun. I fucking love. Like old, it was old. Did not pop up today. Stuff. So the streak is. Oh, uh, I don't think Annihilators. Yeah, they, they typically don't come up. Uh, Catatonia. Okay. That that was uh, that was today. That was Catatonia, uh, July, off of the Great Cold Distance album. Fucking love that. All right. Album. And that band. I'm still mad I didn't see them live. I had my chance. I just missed it. I think it was because it was the week after midnight. So I wasn't going to go to Charlotte twice in like a week. Oh. It was like an hour and a half. And tra- that's like an hour and a half plus traffic. So I'm like, ah, I'm good. Yuck. Yeah, no way. Yeah, but no, I, I I just thought it was a funny mention because yeah, I was like, I think I broke Josh's spirit because <laughs> he was just like, cause like water was dribbling down his chin. I'm like, oh well, because he and I were like the only thing we ever talked about is like football. Because if we ever talked about politics, I'd probably want to headbutt him. Oh, I'm a fairly I'm a fairly liberal guy, and he uh he's not. Well, dude, bro. Which is I mean, which is cool. Like I always say, like I don't talk politics. And I'm like. I'm like, if we agree, okay, I might, but like, usually we don't, and I'm not going to, because I'm not gonna want anybody judging me or vice versa, just based off of things they say or they believe in. I'd much rather judge you by your work ethic, which is is pretty lax. <laughs> so let's not get into politics, because I have yeah. less respect. Well, he's, <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to school to be an accounting major. He's almost done with uh, school, and he makes like fucking way more than I do, so. Oh. Good on him. Like, well, I mean, his he's got like a specialist. So he's like fucking those guys bring in can bring in fucking fifteen thousand dollars to the place a day. You know, if not Dang. more. Yeah, I'm sure they make like I'm sure they make like seventeen, eighteen an hour. I do not. <laughs> Damn. I mean, I tried to. I was like, man, you guys make the money. They're like, not really. I'm like, all right, fucker. I make twelve thirty an hour. <laughs> I'm like I, I make I make X amount of money. The government takes a third of it. And yeah. then I went to the doctor again. I went to the doctor again, and the doctor wanted to set me up with a specialist. I looked at my insurance card, and I'm like, I'm gonna be honest with you, doc. I was like, it's a fifty dollar copay for the see a specialist. We're only doing one specialist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's 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 limit it to one. Just one, and please. She was like, Jesus. She, she was like, fifty dollars. I'm like, yeah. I pay. Uh, I was like, I already pay eighty dollars just for the insurance. Al- the insurance alone. I was like, this is Blue Cross is a wonderful fucking company. Mm. Douchebags. Which, yeah, you, which you, this whole CVS thing is uh, going to worry me. With you know, they they uh, they bought out a, a insurance company, Aetna. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I remember which seeing like, a little great, bit about CVS. that. Yeah, CVS is like five minutes from my house. I'm like, hmm, so I wonder how this is going to affect me. Damn. Yeah, yeah. but that's, uh, yeah, that's that's life. I'm starting to find <laughs> out things cost a lot of money. 
Coop's life. Yeah, well, yeah, man, man. Welcome, welcome to the adult world, right? It, yeah, exactly. By exactly. The end, yeah, by the end of the year, I should be working on a uh, car. That's going to be fun. You uh, be careful in that car, Robert Cooper. Well, I mean, I already know what I want. I, I want 40 miles to the gallon. You want 40 That's miles it. to the gallon? 40 miles to the gallon? 40 miles. 40 miles a gallon, yep. Yeah. yeah, okay, all right. Like, uh, I, I, I don't know what new cars do nowadays, but I can tell you that mine don't get no 40 miles a gallon. <laughs> my, mine gets like 25, and it's a 2002 yeah. Saturn. Well, so I'm like, I yeah, guys. Well, I mean, it's know. a thing, though. But, I mean, I'm cool with it. I was like, you know what? I want efficiency. I want reliability. If it looks okay, if I can get the color I want, that's fine. If get you I okay. You want forty miles a gallon? Get you a bike. Get you a motorcycle. See how well that goes over with your mom. Oh my god! <laughs> can you imagine that? <laughs> you take that fucking bike back to that dealership, you fucking idiot! <laughs> oh uh, yeah, I go over wonderful. Oh, that is that is gonna go over like a fucking backpack in a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Which actually they had to close they had to close a Lowe's in uh in town. The parking lot had to be closed for three hours. Cause somebody because somebody left of a, a fucking backpack. a mysterious package. Oh boy. With a uh what was in it? Was it a pressure cooker? I don't remember what was in it. I remember uh, five minutes from the house they had to call the bomb squad. Because a woman uh, left a crock po- left a uh, pressure cooker sitting in the parking lot. She bought it and <laughs> turns <forgot> out. It. <laughs> no, it ter- turns out okay. this is one of my my best friends, his uncle's uh, girlfriend, her mom. So yeah, like, there's a tree there. Her mom was that was the person who did it. There was a spider in the crock pot, and she didn't want to deal with it. So she she saw a spider in there and said, "Well, I'm just left it in the parking lot." <sighs> okay. I was like, I fucking love you, Davidson County. <laughs> I'm like this. I'm like, this is some deedle deedle horse shit, and I can dig it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but uh, as for intravenous, bringing that back, uh, yeah, a fucking wonderful song for a video. Uh, the video was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Uh, this is just a uh, kind of a thanatops of sorts. This song's got a lot of death. Got a lot of focus on death here. This whole album does, I've noticed. Uh, but yeah, this I, I like how it ends kind of on a large uh, GM session, guitar solo, violin solo, like ooh, in bass. Which, by the way, that when I was, I was listening to this again, I was like, "Fuck, this bass is great." Yeah, there's you can like, feel it. Like it, it's it's sweeping, and I love that. It's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I guess we should probably move to the next song. Even though there's only six of them, we send us. I've noticed we spend a good uh, fifteen minutes bullshitting. <laughs> That's I'm all right. Sure, I'm sure Mark That's... will be listening to this later, being like, "Son of a bitch." <laughs> <laughs> no, he he will be thanking he will be thanking the gods above. I was not on that. That he podcast. wasn't here for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, or I haven't even gotten to my love life yet. Oh no, save that for last. My goodness. Oh, no, yeah. I'll have it on my plugs. Uh, I'll be on the uh, AM station, Love Line with Coop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Uh, track number four, not named after a uh, lake, in, lake in Mich. Is it Michigan? Is Michigan, right? We have, we ha- mm. wait now. Lake Erie, the mistake on Lake Erie. That We own that, Coop. The Cleveland Browns, the mistake on the lake. Yeah. Is that where you're going? Yes. I was going with Lake Erie. Yes, Lake Erie. This, I, I believe it is pronounced Erie, by the way. I thought it would be Irie. Isn't that like a yeah. Jamaican term? Uh, but they were referring it to as Erie in the in the uh, video I watched. Hmm, that's interesting. That uh, Which reminded me of a joke I read in third grade that I never uh, stopped thinking was funny. Where does Dracula okay. ice skate? Uh, where? Lake Erie. <laughs> no, that kills. But I was like, I fucking, 
<laughs> but I'm just, I was like, I read that in a joke book when I was like in third grade, and I'm like, I love this because I had taking a clean it, joke. I'm book taking it with me kids. all the way to 2017. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who, who would have thought in like fucking 2002 would <laughs> come back like not even 2002. This is like 2000, I'll bet you. Know, like, yeah, I'd be fucking drag that back like a body. But, all right, <laughs> here's track number four. Before I go off on another tangent, this title to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> yeah, I was I was like, all right, I, I think we can cut it off. <laughs> well, I, I, some of these things are 11 minutes long, and uh, whew, that was five minutes of playing right there. I remember that there when I did that Dream Theater podcast. There mm-hmm. in the, uh, I was, I'm trying to remember when that was. Was that during the Jonas Exodus? It might, I think it was. Uh, when I did it with my buddy Calvin, and uh, there's once I fucking played like eight minutes just because I wanted to get to the damn vocals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want you want to try and tw- play something that represents what we're you want you want to try and play something so they get an idea of what the song is, and a lot of times. Man, just like you said, there could be like two minutes of just playing, and then finally the vocals kick in or something, and and it does feel like a very long time. Go ahead. Oh, it was it was a twenty minute long song. Oh, dude. You... Oh yeah, I was like, fuck. This would well, this next one coming up would be close to that. Uh, if you combine parts one and part two, these guys have the the sense enough to actually separate the songs uh usually i mean eerie we just listened to was near 12 minutes 11 minutes 51 seconds and these next two that are upcoming part one and part two combined are 13 uh actually 14 minutes so uh they're they're definitely not dream theater length i guess you would say but they're close yeah, yeah, they're. Uh, I mean, they've they've got some pretty long songs, especially for uh, like nowadays. I feel like uh, five minutes is typically most people's attention span in terms of music. Or if you're mm-hmm. pop radio, four minutes is four minutes of Taylor Swift. <laughs> I, I have learned it would not be a day in a retail organ in any sort of retail place without Taylor Swift. Well, you know what they say: you got to get your Swift in. Oh, well, yeah, I wish it would come swiftly, in and out. <laughs> I, guess you, I guess you can say it does, one ear and out the other. Oh, indeed. Until yeah, it plays like, uh, again, just when you thought it was gone. Oh, Boom, God. she's and back. They mul- sometimes they play multiple multiple songs a day. Mm. Oh, my guys. Guys, you have, like, the entire, like, of everything. Why are you doing this? They played uh, – <laughs> They played fucking Felice Navi Dodd twice in three hours. Damn. Which I like Felice Navi Dodd. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy Felice Navi Dodd. I say, oh, I need a Felice Dodd. I mean, that's a as far that's I'm a, more words in Spanish than I can ever say. But I was just singing it one day, just throughout there. But oh yeah, I was like, seriously, guys, where's where's the Italian Christmas donkey? Hee haw, hee haw. <laughs> did you see? Did you see? I saw it out in the wild. I should say uh, I heard yeah, it that's out why, in the wild. That's why I was. That's why I was hoping you were in Goodwill, like I was. <laughs> Still can't uh, believe that's right, where so. I heard it of all places. Fucking Goodwill. Yep. Good old Goodwill. Uh, yeah, and it's a wonderful place. Actually, their selections have been shit lately. Speaking of things that aren't shit, though, uh, this song, I really liked it. It was really gloomy, and doomy. Yeah. Yeah. He, they dance that dynamic feel that they have where it's telling this, you know, telling this gloomy story. It's a good, it's a good way to kind of describe them as kind of gloomy. But one of the things that I noticed or that, that Tim had said on, I don't think, well, maybe it was this particular song uh, where he was talking about how they come together and they, do a, you know put together producer produce but they the the mechanics of them putting together songs they say a lot of times they start with the music first and then they go with the lyrics second uh now during this song they had been i guess zen was somewhere and tim was down in florida uh, so they were separated but they were you know they were emailing stuff back and forth uh so they could try and get these tracks put together I think this one right here was one of the – it was either one of the first or the last that got put together for the album. But regardless, he was saying that when they would get the songs and they were working them out, uh, Zen would have an idea of the way he wants to go with the lyrics sometimes. Well, when 
Tim would start working with the construction of the song, sometimes he would take it and he would, I want to change this up. And when he did so, he changed the sound of the song itself and the whole feel sometimes. So one of the things he said was that he had to email Zen and say, look, I want you to be prepared because I know I know the way you're probably going to go. These guys have been together, I think they said, for like 15 years. Uh, so he knew most likely the way that Zen was going to go when it comes to writing the lyrics. He was going to – it's called Earn, and a lot of the songs are going to be very, you know, somewhat darker in tone. So Tim's like, I just want to give you a heads up. The end of this song – becomes a lot lighter than what it originally was. So prepare yourself, because when you hear it, <laughs> you want to make sure the lyrics kind of go along with it. Uh, but yeah, it was interesting to see how they talked a lot about how they put the songs together and the song structure. Um, another thing I, I learned on there, the the uh, unclean vocalist Zen actually had a near-death experience. And he didn't really go into the details about it, but uh, they, they every once in a while they kind of bring it up, and he'd be like, yeah, uh, yeah, there was something mentioned about a light at the end, which I think they were talking about this album. And he said, well, I can tell you, for, m- for me personally, there was no light at the end. Uh, but listen to how this went down. I don't know if you're familiar with this story, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell it for our listeners. So Neil Bliviscaris is getting ready to play their first ever concert. This is in 2005, I think. And they're getting ready to do this. I don't know if they're getting ready to go on tour or they're just getting ready to do a concert, you know. Uh, so they're getting ready to do this, and I guess he's – Zen sends a text to his friend, to Tim, and says, why don't you meet me at the bar? This is prior to. Uh, why don't you meet me at the bar? We'll get some drinks, and then we'll, we'll do the concert. So he goes and meet. He, Tim goes and sits there, and he says – Zen doesn't show up, and, and Tim is pissed. He's livid, like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, he starts sending texts back, and it turns out Zen gets hit by a damn car before the concert. Uh, so, Sorry. yeah, they, they had to cancel the concert, of course, and he, that's where he had his near-death experience. He had to, they said he had to learn how to walk again, uh, so it really fucked him up. Not only that, I mean, he, it... It affected him pretty greatly, and I think a lot of that comes out in many of the songs that he wrote. As a matter of fact, one of the songs that he wrote off, I guess, their first album, or maybe it was their second, was, he was in the hospital trying to recover. He came up with the lyrics for that song. Uh, so it, it learned a lot from that particular interview, but it definitely made me respect where Zen comes from when he's writing some of the stuff that we hear. Yeah, I uh I was not aware of that story. That's uh morbid. <laughs> it is, dude. It, 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 it is. And they they mentioned that they feel like they've been cursed because other things have happened throughout time uh, throughout the the band's career uh that uh, well, actually I think one of their guitarists died. Uh I wish I, I want to have to look it up to make sure I think cuz he mentioned it was like 2007 or 2008 one of the guitarists died. So they had to find a replacement and that's the the guy we're listening to here, uh, hold on, I'm on the wiki. Give me a second. Benjamin. Well, Benjamin's been with them since 2000, 2008, so that might be uh, that might be the, the previous guitarist replacement, Benjamin Barrett. So uh, that's, that's kind of sad if that's the case. But they've, you know, they, they I don't, they jokingly said that it was almost like the band has been cursed. Uh, bad shit's been happening. So, uh, but anyway, go ahead, Coop. What are you looking at? What are you looking? I was looking at their, uh, oh, wow, their bassist left the band, too. Just like he just left the band. Oh, no, I was looking to see if any of them were dead. Yeah, same here. I'm looking to see them because I, I swear he said he passed. Um. Well, okay, we're looking at on January 26, 2017, the band released longtime bassist Brendan Cygnus. Oh, that was just earlier this year, following allegations of domestic violence. Boy, if that hasn't been a fucking trend of 17. Well, I shouldn't say domestic violence, but allegations of some, uh, yeah. Uh, men behaving badly. Y- there you go. 
that's that's better. Um, yeah, it's really well, disappointing. Did I, I'm trying to see if there was anybody that did pass away, and I'm I'm not looking or I'm not finding anything in the wiki here to kind of corroborate yeah, that statement. Yeah, usually on metal archives, they're pretty good about uh, keeping up with that stuff. It'll be a little so, RIP beside their name usually. Well, okay. Well, Corey King is still alive. According to this, so the release of the album was delayed due to the departure of the guitarist, Corey King. So maybe he didn't die. So that's good. At least uh, that would have been a lot more bleak <laughs> if that was the case. So good deal then. We have successfully misinformed and then reinformed our listeners. What are you for? <laughs> What's that? That's what we're here for. That's right. That's right. We're here for All constant right. miss and re information. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I was going to get to the next song here. I'm ready. Rock and roll, man. I want to talk about the cover, uh, the cover of the album. We don't get, we don't get to talk about that very much. I know we had a, we had a marathon of cannibal corpse discussion on their covers, but I'd like to talk about this one after this next song. All right, all right, yeah. So uh, here is part one of the self-title. Uh, this is Earn Part One, and from In the Void, We Are Breathless. Uh, 
I was going to say that was part one and then throw it to you. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go for it. Yeah, I oh, know. I was just gonna. Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, that was part one. What do you think, Jesse? Oh <laughs> uh, well, hey. <sighs> Let's, yeah, we'll do this right. Uh, the um, I was just gonna say Tim has a, a good range on him. Uh, he sounds he he sounds like a great singer. I mean, I, I can't really put it into very good words tonight for some reason. But I mean, if you listen to his, he voice, sounds like a good singer. Well, uh, <laughs> he sounded like a bad one. We definitely know. We would know. We would know. He's got a. He's got a great range on him, and it's very melodic the way that he brings his, uh, you know, brings his vocals. Um, as for part one of Earn, they, they said that this is probably one of the darkest songs that they've done. This Earn part one and part two here, uh, and now I'm I'm digging into the the lyrics. I've got them in front of me. I don't know if you do or or, or not, but I can tell you that I mean. The way that they write these songs, it is imagery. There's a lot of there's a lot of imagery involved. Uh, they they it seems like they are good at painting a setting and kind of what's going on there. Uh, but sometimes it's it's not you you interpret. You have you have to be good at interpreting as to what's going on too. So again, it, it's smart songwriting uh, where they paint a picture, kind of tell a little bit of a story, but again, it, it's that overall tone of what they're putting out there. It's it's dark, and it, these it, this is not you know this is not something you're going to put on at a party and and have a good time <laughs> listening to. <laughs> this is very uh, it's very emotional songwriting and storytelling here so uh but but yeah coop what do you think yeah um uh, your vocally just fucking wonderful i love the vocals on this album which i mean it's certainly too big uh too big of a surprise uh i i really enjoy the cleans the growls the screams uh i didn't i didn't really get much of a chance to look into this album lyrically i mean mm-hmm. i mean you know, i've been looking as we were playing the music but it's kind of hard to uh it's hard to just kind of look at something and then remember what you're going to say. <laughs> I hear you. I feel like it's it's much easier when you're going through it line by line and kind of right taking notes. So I'll be like, okay, what what does this mean? What are we doing here? You know. Yeah, I mean, that's, here's that's a, what I did when I did Thross. But I, I was going to say, here's a word for you. Uh, di diaphanous. Is that uh, you ever used that word before? No, it sounds like a plant. No, I'm sorry, the dianthus. <laughs> we have, I'll I'll use it in in their in their uh, lyrics here. The writhe of our stained glass angels, diaphanous, pale tongues upon our spines. So diaphanous stands for light, delicate, and translucent. Who? Uh, in a sentence here, they have a diaphanous dress of pale gold. This is all from the Google. So interesting. They are. Oh, and also uh, moribund. I've not heard that used ever. More, what is it? it moribund. M O I R I B U N D. Never heard of that. Yeah, it's a first. I'm looking it up right Google. now. Me too. You're probably going to beat me because I'm typing with one hand on a controller. Oh, well, get ready. This is a big surprise. Moribund, at the point of death. Well, shit. <laughs> this is a album about death. I would have never done. Th- I thought this about Earnhardt. Yeah. Well, I, you know, uh, <laughs> there's a, a certain second. point when you ju- there's a certain point when you hit a wall. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> <laughs> I still love that joke, you know. What's the how are what how are uh, Dale Earnhardt and Pink Floyd the same? Oh no. <laughs> Their last big hit was the wall. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah. I, I I know like probably two people in my life I'd tell that tell that joke to and promptly get punched in the face probably. Uh, yeah, I know a few <laughs> that I'm like, like don't do Dale and Dale, don't you dare insert Dale or in heart. Don't you dare. Yeah, like like I like I was at my buddy's family thing, like one of his family things, because I show up to him at this point. I'm practically family to them, I guess. And they were watching NASCAR, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna watch this with them. The last ten laps took an hour. Yeah, buddy, it gets. I was it like, it's interesting. I'm, like, the, I'm, I am no stranger to NASCAR. Oh, no God. stranger. Yeah, yeah well, I'm my not dad. A, not a fan. Yeah, my dad, dude. My dad was a NASCAR <laughs> fan, and. Uh, you know, I kind of grew up with that, being hanging out at his house. I go over to his house every other weekend, and Sundays, NASCAR Nation, buddy. We'd be sitting there and waiting for, waiting for the race. I, I, when I was a kid, I hated it. I hated it. Now, as an adult, I understand the sport a little bit better, so I can I can tolerate it and have a good time trying to figure out who's going to win, who's going to pass who, who done took too long at the pit stop, somebody tire gone flat. Um, but uh, let's let's talk. Let's talk about this album cover, and then we'll move on to our finale here, and we'll, we'll give our final thoughts and get out of here. So, have you dissected this album cover at all? Looks like a half-naked woman. I yeah, I think she is. We say half-naked. I think the only thing she's covered with is her hair, as in from her head. <laughs> she she oh, well. <laughs> To quote the great Paul Heyman, I didn't know I was. <laughs> I'm in D.C. and I get to see Bush. <laughs> uh, yes, so we got we got a, uh, a a young lady here on the front who's naked, got very long hair, and then we have. I I mean we got a lot of stuff. We got a lot of layers here, Coop. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. We got like, I guess a moon that is behind her. And then do you want to say Cthulhu or do you just want to say an octopus? I mean, poor can does. does. All right, then. Why not both? Why not both? Uh, yeah, and then we have, the, I'm, pull, I'm pulling it up on the big screen. Let's see about this. Okay. All right. So here's a, I got it up. I'm putting it on the old 32 inch TV. All right, well, that's one way to do it. Yeah. That wasn't quite my intention. There's something that's very oh, interesting on this album cover. In the bottom right, there's like a little. I don't know if it is a, a diver's mask, maybe. And I, I assume this is. I don't know. I have no idea if this is underwater or if this is on a, on another planet. Definitely looks like it could be on another planet. I think that's their. I want to say that's their logo. What down the bottom right? It might be. Let me look. I mean, you can keep talking. I'm gonna be. I'm, gonna uh, I'm looking, looking too. I'm, I'm picking it apart. She's holding up like uh, what you think would be. Well, it's the tentacle, the octopus tentacle wrapped, and then it this completely pitch black hole uh, it's a black hole sun because there's it, a lot of flames coming out around the octopus's uh, tentacles there at, that she's holding up I don't know what's going on here but it's well I mean the I song did mention tendrils that's one of the songs mentioned tendrils okay okay oh there but, I didn't, you know, I haven't looked at this album cover enough. Hey, there's titties. All right, cool. There is some boobies right there, buddy. There you go. I mean, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put the put the old fake cover on it and make sure we <laughs> plastic wrap it at the Best Buy. <laughs> uh, it's an interesting album cover, Neil Blue Scar. Their their album logo is interesting because if you look at it, it's Neil Blue Scars twice. Like one of the a lot of times. A lot of times, and a lot of the reviews that I've been reading, they talk about the duality that we hear throughout this album, and I, th- I wonder if they know about the duality that they 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 have to. Maybe that's represented in their 
album title there where it says Neoblivious Scars, and then right below it it says Neoblivious Scars. So it's very tiny, but you can see it there. Yeah. Anyway, I, had, I never like, registered that. It, you could barely see it. It looks, I mean, it's there. Oh, though. I see it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Interesting yeah, stuff. All right. That's um. That's the album cover. That's our. That's our in depth. I know everybody's raptured about what we just talked about there. You know, it's kind of hard to put into words what we're seeing, but it's definitely strange. We got octopuses. We got naked ladies. We got uh, just a pitch black hole in the uh, that she's holding up. No, I don't think there's an urn here that I see, uh, which is strange. But all right, Coop, I turn it back over to you, sir. Let's go ahead and uh, finish this out. I got work. I got to get up at 5 a.m. So that'll be fun. Oh, uh, damn. All right. Yeah. I hate that bullshit. Anywho, here's a final track, track number six. Uh, Earn part two as embers dance in our eyes. Final track. Uh, what do you think? Oh, it it, it was heavy, uh, and they're they're taking it out pretty heavy. It was like, like I said, these past two or these two combined were about fourteen minutes, uh, and I mean it's it's a good it's a good feeling to hear some metal mixed with that violin sometimes. Uh, that's something that I again. It's rare that I come across and, and hear in, in a lot of my playlists, if if at all. Uh, I do enjoy the classical, um, I, you know, the classical intermingling sometimes of what we hear, like Epica. Um, you get that orchestra or that that that, that crazy, overpowering uh, orchestra that you would hear in, in like an Epica song. I, I enjoy that sometimes. So. 
this feels, on the other hand, it, it feels like you got two elements here. You got the heavy metal, and then you got the the classical, and they do a good job of. They don't blend them a whole. Well, I, I guess you would say they have to blend them if they're in one song, but each one seems to stand out apart from the other to me. It's not like they blend together very well. Um, or at least it's not like you can't hear the violin because they, when that hits, it's prominent. They make sure to put that out there in front. So I, as for my thoughts on the album as a whole, it's, it's one of those ones that I don't know if I will come back to a whole lot. I enjoy what I heard. That's for sure. I mean, I've, I could listen to these tracks. You mentioned it was driving music. Like you put it in your car, let it go. You're not going to be listening to it a whole lot, but you know, you can hear it as you listen to it as you're driving. Uh, It's definitely not party music. This isn't, (laughs) this isn't going to get, Oh, uh, Mr. Five finger death punch. Uh, It's not going to put a smile on his face. I don't think so. But now as to whether I would tell somebody to listen to this or not, I think there are, definitely elements uh, of this band that would speak to some of the friends that I have that are metal faithful. And sometimes I know a couple people that are into like classical music. Do you, do you know any, do you have friends like that? Or, you know, people like that, that enjoy the classical stuff. Uh, not, uh, it's few and far between nowadays. Fun. Yeah. The ones they usually do are douchebags. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh I I my good buddy Golden Age Dave. All right. I could definitely see Golden Age Dave listening to some uh classical music at some point. And this might be something be like, "Hey, you you want to kind of test the waters with some metal? Give these guys a shot because just see what you think." I'm sure immediately he'll be like, you know, what's up with Cookie Monster going on here, you know? I look, dude. Chill out. Just check it out. That's all I'm saying. I'll give them a thumbs up for sure because it is a it's a great venture that these guys went on to tie violin, heavy metal, clean, unclean vocals, all of that together in a band that puts out some epic content when it comes to lyric writing. Uh, you know, the, the the lyrics of most of these songs are are smart. They're not. They're not phoning anything in here, in my opinion. A lot of the reviews that I read, though, said that they have felt that this was kind of a more weaker uh, entry into their catalog. So, I, I like I said earlier, I've now gone, I've not gone and went back and listened to anything prior to this. You said what was the one you liked? Portal of I was it Portal of I or Portal of One? Portal of I. Portal of I. And, and everybody else that I've seen when going through these reviews said the same thing. They have Portal of Eye was like one of the best that these guys have dropped. They don't feel that this measures up to that. Uh, doesn't fall way short. It just doesn't measure up to that. So don't think it's a step back, but it's just, again, another instance in which a band is trying to find their feet or, and you know, just play music that the people like. So. Um, Coop, what, are you, what what's your thoughts, man? Uh, yeah, with this final track, I love how frantic it is. It's it's frantic. It's almost panicked in a way. I feel like it starts. Uh, you get like almost like a feel of unease because uh, you know, like the violins are going everywhere, the guitars are going everywhere. I I really enjoy it. A uh, little cool fact that I forgot to mention during this. Uh, I think these uh, they believe the Scaris is the first band that is uh, and uh, that was Patreon funded. Oh yeah, yeah. I I I heard this too in that interview. Go ahead. Well, there's a lot of people were bitching about it, talking about how uncool it is. Personally, I don't see a problem with it. Well, Winter Sun did the same thing, but Winter Sun was like, oh, forty dollars and you get the CD and this and that. I'm like, all right, asshole. Like that's a bit much. Like I get it, but. Eh. Like, these guys, like, I felt like theirs was a little more justified. Like, why not try to go for, uh, you know, why not try and go for something like a uh, a crowdfunding source, try and increase the uh, volume of 
money you get get in. Why should you be a you know, starving artist? Exactly. I mean, the record. Co- I mean, the record says sy- the record company system is broken. I mean, you're not going to mm-hmm. get any money. Uh, unfortunately, you can't really tour that much unless you have money to tour off of, and you're going to make all your money on the tour and then spend it the tour. Yep. I mean, that, it's ridiculous. Yep. So. Yeah, um, they talked about I mean, the fact that they brought in. Go ahead. They brought in some patreons. Uh, the guys, like I don't know if it's twenty or twenty-five patreon subscribers to do the the vocals uh, at the beginning. I don't know if you remember uh, in that first song, but there are some gang vocals, I think, that occur in it. And it's some Patreon guys who subscribed and whatever. They brought them in to do the vocals and help out on, on that track, which is – that's freaking cool as hell. Patreon helps bridge uh, – there's, there's a bit more of a bridge between fan and artist there uh, because you – personally feel like you're contributing contributing to the band's success and not only that a lot of times what you get back in return is it's pretty cool you get some extras uh thanks for being our patreon subscriber here's a little bit of bonus content here's a little bit of uh here here's a you know here's a t-shirt whatever and you get those certain levels or whatever that's 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 cool stuff you feel like you're a part of what came out not only, I mean, I'm sure that adds to the enjoyment of it. Um, I, I did want to say that they did say that this was one of the quickest albums they've ever put together. Uh, they said they started recording in March and was done by May and had it all edited and ready to rock and roll by June. I think it was the end of June. So this was something that was put together pretty quickly. I don't think it was, well, I can't say it's to its detriment or not because I don't know what came before. I don't know if that had a factor in as to why not too many, not to the too many reviewers that I've read are enjoying it or not. But regardless, uh, back to your Patreon discussion, I, I think it, I, I think it's worthwhile for bands to do that. Yeah, uh, I mean, I feel like they're what is, what is being contributed. I feel like they get it. Like you know, I I felt the other Patreon that I saw was Winter Sun. I felt like they were asking for. I guess a, li- a little much for what they were offering. I mean, it's the internet. Yeah. Everybody's a cheap bastard. <laughs> so the way I, so the way I look at it is, uh, and they will scare us. Like they kind of understand. They work on. I feel like more of a, almost like your YouTube sort of uh, YouTube star level of uh, like, hey, you know, twenty bucks and you uh, you'll be part of our live chat or some or live uh, Skype chat or something monthly, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of, yeah, like, you give this much money, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I don't feel like the back any of the backlash they received is really warranted, at least in my opinion. I mean, I could be off base. Maybe I don't, maybe I'm missing something, but frankly, I just find that, uh, I mean, they, they did a good thing, and I really love this album, personally. Uh, I don't think it's quite as good as Portal of Eye, but does that really matter? I mean, it's a, it's still a great album. Yeah. I, yeah. Like that's, I, I've loved all their albums. There's not a whole lot of this band that I can really look at and go, I don't like that. Like I legitimately just, I love their music. I do. It's uh it's so different. It's, it's really unique now and uh, kind of the metal landscape. And I, uh, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, I guess we're going to ratings. Uh, I give it five out of five, which, you know, I think I gave it to Ackercock as well. Uh, both albums, just so much that they brought to the table, and I really feel like they're uh, both albums that are really worth owning, uh, ones that you can come back to uh, and in you know, later years just be like, oh, man, I remember that album. It was a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did you, did you rate it? I don't know if you rated it. Yeah, I gave it a thumbs up, man. I, I'd say that <laughs> okay. it's... It's clearly got – there is not much failure here. You can't really pick this apart and say, oh, that's horrible. That's bad. Because it, really what it is, is everything is played so competently. It's just the the hard part probably to digest or that may not be specific to somebody's palate is the fact that they're bringing all this great, all, all this great uh, music together. That usually isn't together, uh, and they do a good job of that, in my opinion. So, yeah, I give it a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, 
Uh, I guess we're going to go to plugs in because, yeah, this uh, is pretty much all I have to say for this band. And I still got some cleaning to do before I got to go to bed. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, plugs. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, go give that Rattlich in Broadcasting Network Facebook page a like to stay up on top of all the great podcasts that we have to offer. We have MMA. We've got video games. We we talk wrestling on here. Uh, my show, which is the Source Material Comics podcast, Source Material for short, you can find that usually every Monday or every other Monday here on the Rattlich in Broadcasting Network. Uh, recently, the... Most recent episode that we dropped was about Punisher. Uh, Welcome back, Frank. And I'll tell you right now, that was probably one of my favorite episodes to to put on the network. It was a lot of fun. Uh, if you like, if you like the movie Punisher movie with Thomas Jane, there's pro- you'll probably notice a lot of similarities <laughs> in that book compared to the movie. Uh, there's not. There's not much in that book other than Punisher's running with Daredevil that happens in the Netflix series, uh, which actually Daredevil season two. But either way, I don't think I'll be spoiling a whole lot for you, but it, it, go and go and check out our podcast on it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, upcoming here this coming Monday in a celebration of Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Me, Ronnie Adams, and Mark Radulich visit. We visited 2015's Princess Leia, Marvel's Princess Leia. Uh, it was a five issue series. We had a good discussion on that. It should air this coming Monday. Uh, if you like to, you're more than welcome to follow me. I'm at Stiznarchy on Twitter. Don't tweet. Don't tweet a whole lot, but when I do, it's it's a fun conversation. I think. Uh, and other than that, um, just make sure to. Give us a like there on Facebook and rate us five stars on any uh, podcasting platform that you can find, whether it be iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, blogtalkradio.com, or any other, wherever you can find, find podcasts. Robert Cooper, I turn it over to you, sir. Oh, cool. So uh, there's this podcast. I'm on it. It's a thing. Uh, What are we reviewing next week? I don't fucking know. Oh, I can actually look at it. Uh, we're doing the Star Wars band. What is that called? Galactic Empire? Uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. I mean, it fits the whole Star Wars thing, so it makes sense. Oh, Mark and his themed weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking here just to make sure. I believe it is Galactic Empire. Yeah, I think it is Galactic Empire. Yep, Galactic Empire. So that should be a lot of fun. Won't be too many, won't be diving into too many lyrics there. Uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that's a thing. Uh, since I write our podcast, we have a nun ship. Probably not going to do it. I need to catch up on the shows that I was going to watch anyway. So that's, a, that's, yeah. Ugh, October got me behind. I spent all my time like, I'm going to play, watch uh, horror movies. And I didn't do that either. So now I'm like, oh, I still got horror movies to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Well, yeah, it's coming up on Christmas, sir. <laughs> That's yeah, right. I mean, I can watch. Now. I can watch my Christmas slashers. Yeah, you know, watch That's Black true. Christmas, and we watched Silent Night, Deadly Night one and two last year. So now we got to watch three, four, and five, which are apparently some of the worst movies of all time. So it's gonna be it's gonna be wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, yeah. W two M net dot com. Uh, my buddy Sean Garmer. That's his website. Uh, we share content with them. I'm occasionally a writer on their. Uh, Pro wrestling section. You'll definitely see me for the uh, Wrestle Kingdom 12 uh, preview article, which should be out in around January. Uh, and then scrapingthebottom.com. It's my buddy Kevin. It's his. Uh, it's his website for his podcast that I was on once. Maybe I'll be on there again. I, don't know, I haven't talked to him since then. So yeah, uh, it's a thing. It's it's a thing. It happened. It's, uh, did it, and we're done. So uh, yeah, for uh, myself, for Jesse Starcher. Uh, We'll see you next week for Galactic Empire with our uh, fearless leader, Mr. Mark Radlich, who is currently watching a Trolls movie. God bless that man. (laughs) So, uh, for both of us, uh, I'm going to go clean the bathroom. So, until then, uh, be well, be safe, uh, behave, and keep the metal faith alive.
you suffer from chronic CFED or can't focus energy drain? Try over-the-counter Vibrant. One tablet contains the same caffeine as a cup of coffee, but without the calories or coffee breath. Vibrant. Caffeine, not coffee. Taking Vibrant may result in increased productivity and decreased dread in setting alarms. Unexpected enjoyment of the graveyard shift has been associated with Vibrant. Vibrant may be a better budget option than drinking coffee. It may also decrease the urge to doze off, skip work, or exhibit signs of slacking. All jokes aside, always read the label, take only as directed, and limit caffeine as it may cause real side effects. Not for children under age 12. Miss Lindsay, number 22 on your Christmas list. She taught your son cursive, how to show his work, and even how to say thank you. She's given him so much, you'd like to give her something too. And with the great holiday prices at Academy Sports and Outdoors, this year you'll finally be able to give to those you've always wished you could. Like number 22, Miss Lindsay. Because this Christmas at Academy Sports and Outdoors, for all for less means more.